Sarah Pollack is from YouTube, which um, probably needs no introduction, but um, the fact that it doesn't, I think, shouldn't take away from the fact that YouTube has, has come from nowhere to become a major part of our lives at a, a quite extraordinary speed. Um, and again, we can talk, she can talk about how the film community um, that, sh that she's involved with works um, as far as, um, as, as YouTube is concerned. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about where YouTube fits into everything we're talking about today. And just to give you a little background, I'm the film manager there. So I am charged with building and managing the film community, uh, which I do through featuring the best content on YouTube, building programs, uh, t to engage users, particularly filmmakers, um, and working on our product to sort of better support filmmakers and film lovers as we go forward. So I actually used to work in the traditional film world in New York, uh, both at Big Beach, uh, where we made Little Miss Sunshine and Everything is Illuminated, and before that at Miramax. And I chose to move over to digital distribution just because of all the innovation and creativity that I saw happening there um, and feeling a little frustrated with how sort of structured and protocol driven the film world was. Um, so, so that's a little bit about me and why I'm at YouTube. Um, it's an interesting time for film on YouTube kind of across the spectrum. On the one side, we have filmmakers like Michael Moore and Leonardo DiCaprio recently engaging users um, to sort of participate with our content in new and kind of interesting ways. We have studios sometimes leaking clips. We have users collaborating with one another to create films that uh, are determined by the audience as they move along. We have really innovative filmmakers like Four-Eyed Monsters, who you'll hear from later, posting their entire feature films. Uh, and we have programs that we're starting to run, like Project Direct, which we recently launched, uh, dedicated to finding sort of the upcoming film talent on the internet. So I'll just talk a little bit about the audience on YouTube and how we've gotten to this place and what it kind of means for the future. But when YouTube first launched, it really was all about community. It was really a way to share video, personal video, much the way that we've used, you know, text messaging and email and uh, telephone, just a way to connect with other people. And um, as the site has grown, we've gone from, I think, three million videos were watched daily in 2005. We're now at hundreds of millions of videos being watched daily, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of videos being uploaded daily. We're the eighth most traffic site in the U.S., et cetera, et cetera. I'll, I'll breeze through this. Um, but I think it creates sort of a really changing landscape. So while community is still really key to the site uh, and to our, to our history and our future, there are other factors coming into play, and one of those is a rising demand for high-quality content. So we see this both in, on the site with users really being willing to watch videos that are a lot longer than the sort of traditional two-minute clips that have been such a hit. We see them commenting much more on films that are videos, rather, that demonstrate great technique and innovation. We see this uh, across the market, really, with the number of competitive sort of video sharing sites that are emerging now that are built on professional content versus UGC. There's also a growing awareness of the power of internet video, I think. We saw this um, I, at least heavily in the United States with Saturday Night Live and some of the viral videos like Lazy Sunday that came out of that, uh, as well as with campaigns like, I don't know, the Senator George Allen who was caught using a racial slur on YouTube and that really ended his campaign. So we've seen sort of the power of, of YouTube and other video sharing sites to really determine what is going on in popular culture and politics and everything. So I think that really signals an enthusiastic and attentive audience, and that means it's an audience that's really eager, hungry for content, checking in daily, very engaged, aware that they're a part of something special, and that audience is as big as 200 million unique users per month uh, on YouTube right now. So I think that this is a, um, an audience that's really uh, ripe for filmmakers to take advantage of. So first I'm going to kind of talk about audience and the problems of traditional distribution, which we've touched upon a bit today. But, um, as Ira talked about, the, the costs of marketing a film are obviously tremendous. And beyond that, I find that with a lot of independent films, distributors are really challenged to also creatively market when we're talking about films that have really tricky subject matter or no star power. And so I think low P&A budgets that don't allow for TV spots or print ads or you know, traditional methods of marketing combined with material that's often difficult to connect uh, consumers to for, for some distributors leads to really small audiences. Theaters are not full, and we're talking about theatrical distribution if you've even been lucky enough to get that. Uh, DVDs aren't necessarily selling. So to me, small audiences really signal that, number one, as a filmmaker, you're really not making an impact. People aren't seeing your product. And number two, you're probably not making any money. And that really, I think, begs the question of is this 
distribution. If to distribute means to give out, you have an audience to give to. Uh, in this case, you have very little audience and very little revenue. So I would argue that probably this is not the most successful method for most independent filmmakers. So the benefits of uploading to YouTube and I think digital distribution are you have direct engagement with your enthusiastic and attentive audience of 200 million users per per month. Um, and I think that you know that requires you to be a really innovative and pioneering filmmaker to move from behind the camera to being able to really communicate to your audience. But in my opinion, it's the creative kind of force behind the film that is usually the one that is best able to communicate the film to others rather than having sort of distribution excuse me, distribution companies who are sometimes baffled by how to do that. Um, we have audiences also like what Ira talked about in terms of uh, sort of competition in the market and the fact that films are so pricey. Uh, when you have content that is free, you have audiences who are a lot more likely to experiment with films from lesser known filmmakers without star power, perhaps tricky subject matter like I talked about. Also, contest, content is accessible on YouTube. You don't have to hire a babysitter. You don't have to go find a parking spot. Audiences, again, I think are really willing to take more of a risk on content when it's at their fingertips. So I think what that kind of says about YouTube is you've got a ton of people watching your film, potentially. You're able to directly market, and we can talk a little bit more about how to do that later, and I, I think Four-Eyed Monsters will also talk about that a bit. Um, and so I think you've got sort of the audience portion, uh, the connection with your audience, but what about revenue, which is obviously important to many filmmakers. So I would kind of argue that audience is really key to creating revenue. Um, there are two ways that we see filmmakers using the YouTube platform to do this, and one is through our user partner program, uh, which I won't go into too much detail about here. You can hopefully read more about it in press or online, or maybe you already know. But um, in this program, we run advertising against partners who are original content creators, and we share that revenue with them. Uh, important changes recently have been that we're rolling it out to more and more users. We're working on how to make that process more scalable. We are developing new forms of advertising like in video ads, which you may have seen, to drive up the CPM price so that we can share more revenue with filmmakers. Excuse me. Then there are also uh, the fact that audiences can really drive innovative business models. Um, last January, David Carr wrote in the New York Times about a YouTube film filmmaker named M. Dot Strange, uh, who was at Sundance at the time that the web has proved that if you produce something the consumer wants, a business model might follow. And I would argue that, uh, that Four Eyed Monsters really did that. In June, they posted their feature-length film to YouTube. And they had already built up a massive audience uh, through online podcasts detailing the production of their film. And they used the promise of that audience to secure sponsorship for the presentation of their film on YouTube. And again, I'll let them talk more about that later. But, uh, but so they walked away with a financial reward, media attention, a fan base for future films. Um, so I think if you, if you are willing to work at leveraging audience, there are ways to make money off of your content online. So beyond that, beyond the eyeballs and the revenue, I think there are some additional benefits worth talking about. Number one, filmmakers retain their rights. So YouTube obviously does not take any of your rights away. You can post a film, you can take it down when you release the DVD, you can leave it up when you release the DVD. If something theatrical happens down the road, take it down then, put it back up. It's completely up to you. You are in control of what happens to your product. Uh, filmmakers can also involve audiences in the creation of their work. So going back to MDOT, he's referred to YouTube quite often as his own personal focus group. Rather than an expensive studio deal, he can put up test footage, he can see how audience members react to it, he can hear their feedback, and make sure that he's really making the best film he possibly can. Aspiring filmmakers can be discovered. Um, yes, you can still submit your films to festivals and sometimes they get in, but I know in my experience going to them, much of the hype these days surrounds the gala presentations, the premieres, the, the little Miss Sunshines of the world that have star power. And it's still pretty difficult as an independent filmmaker to get an audience there and to really be seen. Sure, on YouTube, it's also difficult. You've got millions and millions of videos. But if you're savvy about marketing uh, you, and you begin to target your audiences, as your audience grows, people are watching and people do see you. And we've seen uh, a ton of music industry, you know, traditional music industry companies signing musicians off of YouTube right and left. We've seen it happening with web series created on YouTube getting picked up by, uh, by the networks. Um, and I think that this is extending to film as well. Um, and then lastly, and I think this is really important, and I'll show a little video so you can take a breather from hearing me speak. But, uh, 
you can, filmmakers can really see the impact of their work. And I think this is really important and something that we've kind of completely forgotten with theatrical distribution, but the importance of seeing how your work really affects people. So I'm just going to play uh, a short clip. I think you guys need to take a look at this. First feature film ever in its entirety on YouTube. It's a pretty exciting day for the future of independent film. I guess it's true what they say. YouTube really is going to be the future of filmmaking and art and all this other stuff. Even though I own the DVD, I did watch it on YouTube. I'm glad to see that you put your film out there. I think this might be the first time I've actually found something on YouTube that I actually feel has changed my life. I've actually sat next to somebody writing just right next to each other. I'm half one of these stories. Humans are strange creatures. Strange in a very, very good way. A little more hard work. This movie made me think of every single time I've looked at a girl. We want to meet each other, but we can't communicate. Missing opportunities. It sucks. The weird culture that we're a part of today. We've become so attached to like MySpace and YouTube and trying to connect with people. With technology and all the mediums that we have, it alters the way that we view ourselves and the way we view others. What do I say? You can't verbalize it. I don't know how to express in words. The chaos of communication. Love is just a bonus. I've been a four-eyed monster most of my life. I'm already really uncomfortable with who I am. I don't think I know how to function when I'm not one. I'm really scared of the future. remarkable about being a filmmaker, being an artist, and being able, I did it, yes, thank you, uh, and being able to see the way that your film reaches audiences and to see what that looks like. So uh, I guess in closing, um, we've seen what's going on, on in, within film on YouTube now. It's really, I think, in its infancy. Um, there's a lot still to happen in the future. I think that I would encourage filmmakers and distributors to sort of think about digital rights in a new way. Uh, to start engaging online audiences, whether that's through posting production blogs, uh, outtakes, deleted scenes, Q&As with directors. Start engaging your audiences and building them, and then you will be able to leverage those fan bases, I think, for financial and artistic reward. So I think on the YouTube side of things, we need to continue to develop our user partner program to be as inclusive as possible and improve revenue streams accordingly. We need to ensure that content and talent is discoverable. I know that's a complaint and one that you know, we constantly work on uh, how to best present content, how to make it easy for you to find what you're looking for. And we need to explore ways to improve the YouTube experience for filmmakers and film lovers, whether that's through quality, presentation, ease of feedback, etc. It's all stuff that we are aware of and, and working on. So I think that's pretty much it for me, um, but we can talk more in the panel. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>